Evening Church and welcome to the third of our reflections as we journey together through Holy Week and we journey with Jesus on his last week on earth. Um, I invited you, those who have had an email or a link or have seen our Facebook page, to join me maybe with a chunk of bread and a small bowl with some oil or something to dip into some melted butter or something like that. And we'll need that for our reflection at the end. If you haven't got it, don't worry, don't panic. You can still join in with us and still listen to everything and join in with our praying. And then maybe later on sit on your own and uh, just do the reflection and uh, yeah, dip your bread then. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with, you, uh, with me please to John chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 21 and read to verse 32. John chapter 13, 21 to 32. After Jesus had said this, he was very troubled in spirit and he testified, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you're about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus had said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. So church, Jesus is actually sharing a meal with the disciples. Uh, it's a meal that we've come to call the Last Supper uh, when he reveals that he's about to be betrayed. We can imagine the looks kind of bouncing around the group, can't we, as uh, everyone there tries to work out who it is. No one dared speak until Simon Peter, and let's face it, he is usually the first one to open his mouth. But Simon Peter nudges uh, the man next to him. The text says that one of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. And he asked him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. Why didn't Jesus directly accuse Judas? Why didn't he speak to him face to face there and then? Why hand him a piece of bread and whisper privately to the beloved disciple beside him? I wonder if there was a risk that the other disciples would have tried to uh, dissuade Judas or block his way, prevent it from happening or slow down the inevitable. The beloved disciple was clearly trusted by Jesus. Judas, on the other hand, was not. And yet still Jesus washed his feet and still Jesus shared a meal with him. He didn't object or defend himself but trusted entirely in the truth that would be our salvation. I for one have got so much to learn from Jesus' behaviour. See, we too will have been betrayed in our lives, will have been let down, treated unfairly, talked about, will have been the subject of gossip or exaggeration or lies. It hurts. And that pain 
hangs around for a long time? How do we respond to those who hurt us? How could we or how should we respond? What prevents us from acting with empathy, dignity and ultimately with forgiveness? And so I invite you now to take your piece of bread and your small bowl with your little oil or melted butter in. Just take a moment to remember the times when you felt betrayed. Remember the times when you felt hurt and let down. And then pray as you feel able for healing, for peace. Pray for all involved. And then when you're ready, dip your bread into the bowl and remember as you do that we have also hurt others and they have hurt us, often unintentionally. Eat and know that through Christ we can forgive and be forgiven. Shall we pray together? God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn now from the wrong that we have thought and said and done. And we're mindful of all that we failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I've chosen a song again for us today. Um, it has wonderful words. Everyone needs forgiveness. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs the hope of a saviour. So we're going to listen to or sing or watch Mighty to Save. the whole world see we're singing for 
the glory of the risen King. My Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Oh, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Oh, Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save, oh, forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Yeah. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen.